I, I was writing some notes here, and I, I, I want to coin a new term today. Uh-oh. All right. The, the, the BMI, the Boring Meter Indicator. Business Brain, the Entrepreneur's Show, number 397 for Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. <laughs> Folks, and welcome to welcome back to Business Brain, where we are here at businessbrain.show, where we are using our business brains and thinking about using our business brains and noticing how we're using our business brains every week. Sponsors for this episode include Shopify, where you can go to shopify.com slash SBS to get your 14 day trial and full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. We'll share more details about those features in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. In Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. It's being self-aware of using my business brain. That's what it is. Really, I, you know, if I think back over the last seven plus years that we've been doing this show, my own self-awareness, my own awareness of my self-awareness has increased largely as a result of doing this show. And perhaps because of that, uh, this show has has become more and more just about that self-awareness thing and specifically how it helps us with business. But I think it all kind of helps us with business. So I don't know. Well, and I actually think it helped, you know, one of the reasons we changed the name recently and focused on this business brain concept is it helps you in your your life as well. Yeah. Uh, You know, when I always talk about, you know, you get to pick what story you tell. Well, I mean your whole life because, you know, it makes it a better story. Uh, even if your even your failures can be really powerful stories uh, when you talk and tell people about your life and what's going on. Um, sometimes the failures, it takes a little distance uh, to make them. <laughs> well, you got to <laughs> let the tellable. pain. We, oh, for, yeah. we forget what what specific pains have felt like with time is really what that yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Hey, Tim's got a pain, though, and he wrote us here at feedback at businessbrain.show. And he says, uh, I'm new to the business brain coming over from uh, Dave's other show. Uh, So I apologize if this question's been asked. No, no. He says, uh, I have a very small business uh, and I'm earning between five to eight thousand dollars annually. I've been using fresh books for almost 10 years. And they just announced that once again, they are raising their monthly subscription to $30. My bookkeeping needs are super simple and I could easily use a spreadsheet, but fresh books, but I use fresh books mainly for their invoicing and giving clients a simple way to pay electronically. In addition to the monthly fee, I also lose about 4% on each payment that comes in through them between 30 bucks a month for fresh books, 12 bucks a month for Dropbox and banking fees. I feel like I lose a growing portion of my income just to this kind of fee infrastructure. There are some months that I have little to no work uh, that I just lose money. So is there a better way to do this that I'm missing? Should I just be using spreadsheets and paper checks? Does the size of my business make a difference in how I do this efficiently? And is this just a cost of doing business and that I need to suck up? raise my rates or do more work so that the set fee isn't such a large percentage. Also, is there a point that a business is too small to be worth it? He says, Uh I I ask myself this every April. I did that whole work for how much, you know? So um, I have some very specific answers for parts of this. And then, you know, uh, we've got some other things to talk about, but in terms of if all you're using fresh books for is invoicing, I would take a look at Stripe. Uh, that would be yeah. the, the first place because there is no monthly fee. Yes, you will yep. pay a transaction fee for your credit cards. Yeah, you're still going to pay the the four percent. Yeah, somewhere between yeah, yeah. two point seven and four, depending on what the deal looks like. But you could also use PayPal for that. PayPal and Stripe have similar operating methodologies, and and there's in fact there's no reason you couldn't have both because neither one of them is going to charge you a monthly fee to have that set up. But you can, I I have one business where Stripe is what we use for our invoicing and it works fine. I mean, we don't send out that many invoices per month. It's, you know, somewhere between zero and maybe five, you know, and five would be an astronomically busy month for the invoicing part of that business. And Stripe works great. You know, it lets people pay with a credit card or they can pay with a, 
you know, bank transfer or whatever. It's, it just works. So that would be my, my first thing to say. My second thing would be find a bank that offers free business checking because they do exist and save on that fee. I can't save you on Dropbox. Well, I might be able to save you on Dropbox, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back to that. How, how much Dropbox do you need if you're just doing, you know, the, the, this kind of small volume? You can't use, you know, like Google Drive or some other free? Well, his business, version? and I, I skipped this part. I don't, actually, ah. I don't know why I skipped this part, but it's, it is relevant to that question. He's an okay. audiobook and e-learning narrator. So got it. He needs, okay. he, he's got yep. relatively larger pieces of data that need to move around between him and his clients. So I understand. Yeah. I, I think it, he also is, is aware of a couple of other issues with the business. One is if your uh, rates are such that those monthly fees, and I, and I think it's great to save, to, you know, try to save money and all that kind of stuff. But if your system is working, um, and, and your rates are such that you're concerned about, you know, another 10 bucks or whatever it is, I think you should raise your rates if, if it will support it. And, oh. and I think it's, it's worthwhile doing an experiment to see how it impacts. I do it with my businesses all the time where I say, okay, well, let take a vacation rental business. We just start, you know, we go out strategically and say, what if we charged an extra 30 bucks a night or 40, 50 bucks, uh, to see what happens and, you know, do some different testing, uh, and and then I think the other question that, well, that the nut of it is go ahead. It, no, just to that one point before we move past yeah. it, you don't have to do that with your existing clients. You can test Correct. it with the yes, new clients. Very important. I just wanted yeah, to make sure that go. wasn't lost uh, here because that's how you yeah, do that's that. Important. Yeah, yeah. See if people come. See if your business. I mean, you know, it's it's a pretty small business, so or very small business, as 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 Tim said himself. So. Uh, you should be able to tell pretty quick whether it's, you know, and I, in my experience, most self-employed people undervalue their services dramatically. Yep. Uh, and increasing your rates is often a sign of professionalism. We see it all the time right now. And when inflation goes up, you get, you get an email. Hey, sorry, just like FreshBooks is doing to you. Hey, our expenses are going up. We're increasing our rates. The holidays are coming up. USPS just send out an email. Hey, guess what? From November through end of December, you know, rates are increasing. It's yep. not that people don't expect that. Um, but to your point about when is it too small of a business to matter? I think it's it depends on how you uh, how you define success. Because one of the things we're going to talk about today is this concept of a portfolio life, which is kind of encompasses some of our revenue stack. Uh, idea that we talk about on the show but beyond that in the sense that it sounds like I, I would argue that that business does more for you than just generates money mm. Mm. that's it, a good thing it, to to be aware of yeah yeah, yeah. Fair. and you know we can dive into accounting and talk about always having a business that you can do write-offs for and <clears throat> excuse me and and you know all these other things but there's other you know, real values that we, Dave and I talk about all the time, how we do this show. Cause you know, it, we, we, we like working together. It connects us to other people. I always feel it adds to my credibility. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, Tim, I would imagine that if you made a list of things that you enjoy with that business, it, there's probably a lot of them in the non-monetary column as well. And that's important. Not, uh, not to forget that. Yeah. I, I, I do have two other things to share. Number one is, Yes, FreshBooks is moving up to 30 bucks a month. However, if using FreshBooks is the thing that makes it easy for you to invoice your customers, be aware of that before you cancel FreshBooks, right? Because one of the classic issues with small business people, and I, I see this from plumbers to consultants to everything, is actually sending out bills, doing the invoicing. And without the invoicing, it's rare that you're going to get paid. Somebody might pay you, but, you know, you got to ask them for the money. So 30 bucks a month to earn $8,000 a year. Well, I mean, if that's what it takes, then make sure you make sure you keep invoicing. I guess that's the advice there. And then the second is I've got a link into our business brain support group on Facebook to a thread uh, where we were talking about different accounting packages. 
And someone mentioned one that's only for Mac users, but since I know that Tim came over as a listener from my Mac Geek Gab show, that he probably is a Mac user, but it's called Banktivity, and it runs, it's a subscription as well, but it's between $50 and $100 a year, and it seems like it can do a lot of the same things that FreshBooks will do. So take maybe take a look at that. I'll put links to all that in the show notes at businessbrain.show. You know what it's time for? I love that sound because that sound is the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify is a platform designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like us the resources once reserved for big businesses, customized for our needs with great-looking online stores that bring our ideas to life and tools that help us manage our day-to-day and drive those ever-important sales. Shannon and I, we've used Shopify and various ventures throughout our history and Man, it makes life so much easier. There's no reason not to use Shopify. And it's not just us. Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs just like us from first sale to full scale. And you know what happens every 28 seconds? A small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. Get started building and customizing your online store with no coding or design experience. You've got powerful tools that'll help you even find customers. And like I said, drive those sales and 24 seven support. So you're never alone. Go to shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase for a free 14 day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash SBS right now. Shopify.com com slash SBS and our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. All right. So let's talk about this whole idea of living the portfolio life. I, I like the way we've been sort of, we've talked about this a couple of different ways and I, you and I have had discussions about it pre-show uh, before, but I like the way you explained it to me by you asked, would you invest all your money in just one stock? And if the answer is no, then why would you invest all your efforts into one company, one side hustle, one career path? Why not do more? Why not diversify a little? And I, yeah. I think that's a good foundational way of, of starting this conversation. I like that. Yeah. And this, uh, this concept, you know, you shared this article with me. We'll, we'll link it in the show notes. I, I really like it because it's a different take on our uh, kind of maybe a more expanded take on our revenue stack, having multiple revenue streams to help diversify and uh, build wealth and, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, the one thing that I think is really powerful with this concept is that you can do it, you know, em- embrace it. Even if you're working full time for somebody else and you're trying to get out on your own or do a side hustle or this kind of thing. And uh, I think it's, it's, powerful to think like that not just okay i got i'm gonna go start another business i'm gonna leave my job or whatever and then once i get going good i'm gonna start a different one and start a different because that, that can that can seem uh a little daunting when you're first starting after a while you, it may not yeah <laughs> i would say <laughs> you find that it's not but um so it doesn't matter what stage you're at whether you're you know an, ex, an existing established business and um you kind of feel like, hey, I could step away. I could do something different. Or if you're working for somebody else and you're thinking, okay, I want to do something. I have time. Um, I'm going to throw this con- this this uh, statement out again. Don't watch TV. You know, whatever you're streaming, whatever you don't do it. Just you should have your laptop and you should be researching and building something when you have that downtime. It'll f- enrich you far greater than watching game of thrones or whatever <laughs> on, on <TV. laughs> uh, it's just it's just it's the free hours of your day or your evening that you can push out further it's that slight edge concept um, which is another book i love that if you just do you know a few extra things every day to build something greater than what you have now it'll make all the difference for you um it, it totally has made it for me and um, I'm happy to share the the concept here. Yeah. It, I mean, you know, it's, it's an easy way of saying be disciplined, but it it's more than that. It's choose what, you know, to your, to the, the thing you say all the time, 
choose the story you want to tell, then you don't need discipline to walk the path to get there. Right. Because yeah. you, you know, I no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not disciplined at all. I'm, I, I'm all over the map. But I wanted when I was younger, I wanted a lot of stuff. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, I wanted a nice car and then I wanted a nice house. And then I, you know, realized, oh, wow, I got these kids now and I want them to have nice stuff and I want them to go to good schools and all that kind of stuff. So that really drove me in a, as a, you know, uh, like Steve Jobs said, it's easy for me to look back and connect the dots and tell you, oh, just work at night. It totally makes sense. I, said, I didn't really plan it as much as I just did it. Um, and uh, I, I, it really is a, a big deal if you can give yourself those extra two to three hours uh, a day or even four hours a day to achieve something um, in addition to what you're doing now, it can really add up. And when I used to, you know, one of the bits of advice talking about working for somebody else and then doing something is as soon as we would hire a new employee, get them settled, do the onboarding stuff. I would always ask them, so what do you, what do you do on the side? What are you interested in? And sometimes they would react kind of strangely and look at me like, wait, you know, I just started working here. What are you talking about? But some people got it and like, Oh, I'm into this. And I, I sell on eBay or I'm a, you know, whatever, a model train person. And I trade this, swap that. I always encourage my employees to have something else besides just their job because it benefits your company too. It, it creates be, uh, b uh, more creative thinkers. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it allows, it also, it, it's a different frame when you talk to your employees that way. Cause they're not used to you saying, Hey, you know, go, go start something else. And it all, it, it can benefit you by relieving some strain, uh, you know, on salaries. If you have kind of entry level salaries, if you could help someone learn another skill, um, you know, we even let them use some of our, our resources and, and sure. uh, tools, if you will, to, yeah. to do that. And you just never know. I, I know a couple, actually somebody we had on the show a few years ago uh, that talked about, how they embraced teaching their employees this kind of thing. And then when they would go leave, they actually started investing and, in, you know, helping them start new companies. So instead of just losing talent, you built this portfolio life out in just a, a different method. So, so don't overlook other people that work for you as well. In addition to yourself. Yeah. I like it. I, it's, um, um, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I, I was just gonna say, you know, as a business owner, I, I really, I, another part of this is you have to kind of embrace, uh, I call it the art of replacing yourself. It, once you start to feel like, okay, it's going, they don't, maybe they don't need me. I've got a, a sales manager. Or I've got whatever for your business. It's time to move on to something new, either within the business, you can certainly expand out and do different things, or maybe you should go start another one, right? Um, and, and go out and challenge yourself and help build that portfolio out. I, I will share that as someone, I am someone who has a very hard time convincing myself to replace myself. I intellectually, I see it right. But I, I, I don't do it naturally. So I just let my wife do it. Well, right. <laughs> and, and, and it works great. Yeah. She is smarter than me when it comes to that. And she's worked with me and she would say, you need, you, you don't, they don't need you here anymore. And I'd be like, really? Then it takes me about a year. <laughs> and yeah. then I finally okay. agree. <laughs> okay. So it, it's okay. So you have the same problem I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah but, but if you don't have someone that's telling you this and you probably do, you may just not be listening to them. Uh, but if you don't, or if you need a little extra push, or like me, if you need something to fill that emotional void, because I, I, I even though it, like, again, intellectually, I know like this business can run without me. I, I, I have this thing where it's like, well, I need to be involved. I need to do this thing. What makes it much easier for me to emotionally detach is to have something else, right? Yeah. To start yeah, something that's... else. And then that way it's like, oh, I need, I need to be over here. I can't be in two places at once. Good news. Intellectually, I know that the the place I used to be, I can replace myself there. So let me take a minute and put some effort into that. And then I can refocus and, and go do this new thing while I'm confident that this, this other thing is going to be just fine. And, uh, you know, and I, I mean, it's not like you have to detach and never think about it again. You're just no. you know, changing your relationship to the day to day. I don't even want to say getting out of the day to day. You're changing your no, relationship you, yeah. to the day to day. 
the day is long. I mean, you can come in and okay, yes. or, or <laughs> up online and work for an hour here, an hour there, just kind of thing. And you know, I I, I was writing some notes here, and I I, I want to coin a new term today. Uh-oh. All right, the, the, yeah, we need like a symbol, like uh, you know, <laughs> some some. But anyway, I, I one of the ways that I've you know looking back is I I find myself after a little while I, I get bored. You know, I have. Uh, ADHD, I'm sure, especially when it's related to business. But after the startup and the the struggle and you start to success, I was like, okay, this works and everything. But it's kind of this, you need an indicator and it's the uh, the BMI, the boring meter indicator. So if you're <laughs> I like this, <laughs> yeah, if you're, when you feel yourself getting bored, that's the first tip that you need a new challenge. And, and this is what I notice, And, you know, that's when you want to take on something new. That is you. That itch. If you're sitting there or whatever, you're like, well, listen, you know, I don't really need to step in and work on this. I'm, a, you know, a little. If you start to feel a little bored, man, that that BMI is is starting to creep up. It's time to find something new to do. Hey, I'd like to tell you about the Compile Swift podcast. This is a show dedicated to discussing development for all Apple platforms. You can keep up to date with app development news, tips, and advice for developers of all skill levels, including those just getting started. Technology moves fast. Keeping up with the latest changes and features to make your app stand out in a crowded app store is a constant challenge. Get information you can use and motivation to keep you moving forward. And that's not all. Soft skills are just as important. We talk about that all the time here on Business Brain. Get advice on working with team members, clients, and users. And let's not forget dealing with both good and bad app reviews. Something else we talk about here on the show. Those interactions can make the difference between success and failure. This podcast, Compile Swift at CompileSwift.com, covers all of this and more. So if you're looking to start or continue your Apple development journey, visit CompileSwift.com or search for Compile Swift in your podcast player of choice. All right, so we got the BMI. We know that we have to change our relationship with the day to day. We can embrace the art of replacing ourselves, right? Yep. But like, what are the things that we're going to get out of this portfolio approach here? Like, what, what, where are we going? Yeah, with this, I, it, right. Like, right. I, I think, yeah. No, we talked about you know not investing all in one stock. Yeah. I, I, I think it's you, you're just that continual diversification and. The, one of the things I liked about this concept, we were reading about it earlier today, is that it's not just about business and career and money. It's also uh, should include things that you do uh, for yourself, whether it's like volunteer work, your hobbies, things you do to enrich your personal life. That should be part of your portfolio as well, right? If you're involved in causes, um, d- just like a, a side hustle does, they, they think they they make you think different. They expose you to uh, other opportunities. You get to meet new people. And in turn, that creates a, a good system that continually enriches and helps you build out this, port- this portfolio life. So it's not all just about money and work. Right. Right. Yeah. In fact, it's, you know, people talk about creating a lifestyle business. I, I would say this is creating a lifestyle from your business. And from, from, or, or a lifestyle of your businesses, right? Where you're doing yeah. these different things so that you can live this life that you want, but you're not doing it with just one business I, or, or just one thing. Yeah. You've got, that's right. Yeah. 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 And I think the, for me, the goal was, and I think what you can do with this concept is it, it can eventually buy you independence. Now there's a big, there's a difference. It doesn't buy you freedom uh, because you're tied to all these things, right? If the buck stops <laughs> often at you uh, when something has to happen, but, uh, or financially that kind of thing, but it gives you the independence to work on different projects, work on different businesses, work on different causes, hobbies, volunteer work, uh, whatever you want to do. And um, it also teaches you that, Everything changes like all the time, not, you know, once in a while or maybe it'll change. It does change. And so when you learn to shift around to all these different things, well, you're like a change artist. You know, you just like, OK, great. Yeah, I knew that was coming. I, I, now this this 
maybe this entity isn't making any money. Maybe it's losing money, but something else is picking up and you, you push on into that. So um, there's some real benefits, independence and, and uh, being able to manage change, just being two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, yeah, I, I like this idea and we've talked about it a few times of independence versus freedom. Uh, I always say that my employees have freedom. I have independence, <laughs> right? Because yeah. I, I'm never and flexibility free. too, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm never free. And I mean, I, we're all free, right? I mean, at least anybody listening to the show is hopefully, you know, everybody is, but uh, it's, it's a different, it's a different mindset because yes, the buck does stop with us and we have to be, we have to, you have to be ready for that. But I, I, yeah, I, I like this. It, it, yeah. yeah. And we've done shows uh, uh, as well, like having a problem solving mindset that needs to be part of your business brain. And the better you are at problem solving, I think it allows you to dip in, help solve a specific problem that maybe your staff can't, or maybe a group that you're involved in doesn't have that skill set. And then another part of it is then to be able to, to step back out. And so, you know, it, it, and it's kind of that managing by walking around stuff. If you can, Oh, what's going on over here and what, what input do they need for, to help get this thing done? Or if this project is stuck. Um, so you need to, you know, think about that, that problem solving mindset and what, what value you add to each of these, uh, venues if you will since it's not all just about business um but that, and then go in do what you're do what you're good at yeah the, the, and the business side of it though like i think you and i embody this portfolio approach i know we didn't come up with the term but it is what each of us and it, it, it had sort of created for ourselves and i i think it's what made us fast friends when we finally you know met and started talking about this stuff because i find safety in the portfolio approach Right. Not only do I get to cater to my various interests and serve my ADD in a way that, you know, actually is productive and keeps a roof over my head and all those things. But it it's safe because I you know, I always I, the way I've always talked about it. And I like the term portfolio approach better. It sounds more professional. But I always think of my my life is having lots of faucets. Right. And I build a faucet. And the idea is you need to keep the water running from the faucets. Right. But I don't need one faucet to fill up the bucket. As long as all the faucets together are filling up the bucket, then I'm fine, right? And so I can have one faucet that's trickling a little and one that's flowing pretty good, or maybe, maybe two or three that are flowing pretty good, and one that every now and then just like, you know, gushes water, but then sort of dries up and, you know, needs a little bit of tender, loving care to, to make it gush water again. But, you know, it's just this whole idea of, well, I know... The way, the way this started for me, I don't know how it started for me, but part of this mindset is the same as like a consulting mindset. I would rather have many, many clients than just one. I would, I would rather make, you know, a thousand dollars a month or, or a year, whatever it is, you know, from 20 different clients than $20,000 from one client, because I know in both of those scenarios, at least one client is going to go away at some point that I don't get to decide nor predict. And so by having, you know, that, that the, the multiple clients, well, I know that some are going to go away. Okay. In that scenario, let's say one goes away. Well, instead of making 20,000, I make 19 and the other scenario when it's just the one client, if when, when that one client goes away, I go from making 20 to zero. And that's, that's right. you know, that that's where this portfolio life, it really is a, sort of a, a proactive defense mechanism. And maybe, maybe this is the ultimate fear-based decision, Shannon. I don't know. <laughs> because as yeah, we're sharing I, it, like there's definitely some, some protection and, and prevention in, in, in my mindset about this. It's like, okay, yeah, I got to get another venture going just so that I have, that was one of the hardest things about selling the Mac right. Observer when we did it last yep. year was it was a well-maintained business in maintenance mode. And, it, it, you know, it, uh, it was always something that I knew I could just pour my time into and really make it, you know, flourish in a different way. It paid all the employees. It was doing great things, but I knew that there was potential there. Well, now a buyer came in also seeing that potential and, 
evidently I set them up, you know, in a great way, <laughs> like that's, which is good because yeah. I knew I had myself set up in that way. Right. And, and so that's, you know, that it, it's like, that's, that's where this portfolio life thing comes from for me is, is the safety of it and the interest. Well, and I get to do it different, interesting things. I mean, it's it, interesting. It multiple yeah. levels. Yeah. I have two comments on, on what you were just talking about. One is, you know, Go to a bank or financial institution and try to borrow money when you have one big customer. They'll be the first to tell you. Well, I mean, they, more often than not, they tell you no anyway. But uh, that is a huge red flag to them. Yeah. Um, so you, you and they they know what they're talking about. So, you know, that should tell you something about how diversification is so important. And I also think that for people like us, um, sometimes it's hard to say what you do. You know, and I love this, this, <laughs> right. True. It's hard. Yeah, it's true. And, and you start talking about it and you're like, well, you know, but you know, what sounds better? Uh, let, me, let me give you two examples. Okay. Uh, well, um, I, I own some vacation rental houses. I have a business that sells purses. I have a podcast. I've written a couple of books, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Or to say, well, I own a portfolio of small businesses in the vacation rental industry, in the fashion business in the broadcasting business and I'm a best selling author. Yeah. What sounds better? Yeah. So both of those things describe exactly the same person. Yeah. You. So you but that's right. <laughs> but one of them people go, "Oh, that's kind of this guy's maybe kind of flaky, I don't know." Or whatever. You know, that's kind of interesting. Uh and it sounds like I'm stumbling along, but the other one when you wrap it in this portfolio suitcase if you will, it sounds very professional and they, it is very professional. It takes a lot of work to manage those, those ventures. Um, it, it, again, you get to decide how, how this stump, stuff comes together. And I love the adding this portfolio, um, the portfolio life concept to, you know, our lexicon, if you will, yeah. you're going to probably hear it about it a lot. Uh, w one thing I do want to talk about um, before we go that I think is important with this, concept though and it kind of ties back to the beginning where tim was talking about you know is this business worth doing is is each of the things in your portfolio needs some kind of feedback loop and to, it's important to keep you from wasting your time and what i mean by that is that you should set up some kind of metric to measure success and it doesn't have to be monetary all the time of course i like that metric quite quite a bit but um it it could be monetary, but it does it make you feel great? That has value as well. Does it connect you to a community that you really want to be connected with? Mm. Um, you know, we know we've interviewed people on here that have just focused on building thousands of followers on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, it, it, that's, that's their thing. And they're connected to like 5,000 people. And I can see them commenting and they, it gives them something well beyond monetarily could eventually lead to monetary as well. Yeah. But you need to be able to measure things to decide if you need to change what you're doing or double down to do more of it. Because again, if you're involved in some cause and you're like, wow, this is great. And it's, man, I love having, being able to help other people. And it, it, it helps me in this way. That's wonderful. But think about the feedback loop instead of just, Oh, I, I want to diversify for the sake of diversification. What is it bringing you uh, in in your own definition of success? Yeah, uh, yeah. No oh, feedback loop. We'd love to hear from you too. That's one of the metrics we use here. And and I'll be perfectly frank. We would love more feedback from you. I love that we got that note from Tim, and hopefully we were able to help Tim. And and by doing that, and sort of. Being transparent about doing that, hopefully it helps more than just Tim, right? Like that's the, the yeah. benefit of it. But yeah, feedback at businessbrain.show. We would really love to hear from you. And um, it, it means Great. a lot to us. It is it is one of the forms, uh, one of the benefits, one of the the metrics that we use to, it makes us feel good is really what it is. It, it's nice to well, it know you, that we're not just talking to each other, right? Like we, everybody we, wants to feel important, of yes. course, right? Yeah. And well, have we, value and worth. We can <laughs> see sure. that people are, you know, we can see that you're downloading the show. We know that there's thousands of you out there that are listening and we'd love to hear more from you. It's a, it's a good thing. And we, and we're happy to help. Great. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So now more than ever, I think, you know, with uh, there's a lot of uncertainty in the economy, what's going to happen as we go into the end of the year and next year, uh, change comes at us really fast. 
understanding and living a portfolio life, you know, it can really help you succeed when others get hit you with bad news uh, or change that they are not ready for. So let us know what you think. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Thanks for listening, folks. This is, uh, this is inter- it was, I, like, this feels like one of the most personal episodes we've ever done. Perhaps it's just because it talks about literally what you and I do and how we approach our, our business lives with our business brains. So, yeah. Agree. Thanks for listening, folks. Make sure you check out Shopify.com slash SBS to get that 14-day trial. Check out that Compile Swift podcast if you're an Apple dev. And uh, keep living that charmed life, will you? See you next week. <laughs>